Hey there everyone, my name is Luke and welcome to my channel. I hope you'll join me tonight as I try and take a photograph of a beautiful but quite challenging nebula tonight. It's called the Cave Nebula and it's located up in Cepheus. So for those of you who regularly watch my channel, you probably already know about the equipment I'm going to be using tonight. But for anybody who's new or perhaps unsure, this little bit is for you. So we'll go through the equipment starting from the mount. I'm going to be using a Skywatcher EQ8 Pro. It's new to me, it's a used mount, but all the same, I'm very, very happy to own it. Um, on top of that, I've got mounted my Skywatcher 250 PDS. That's an F4.7, 1200mm focal length Newtonian telescope. I'm using a Skywatcher Aplanatic Coma Corrector there uh, in front of my camera, which is a 2600 MC Pro by ZWO. I will be using an Optolong L Extreme filter to try and capture this nebulae as I'm shooting here from Bortle 7 skies, and I think without it, I really wouldn't be able to see a thing. And the whole imaging system is controlled by an ASI Air Plus. So this is actually going to be my second session trying to shoot this target. I did have a session much earlier on in the lunar cycle where the moon was almost full and it really did make a difference I think on these sub exposures. The ones from tonight where there's almost no moon at all are looking quite a lot better. I thought it was worth talking about this because even with a dual narrowband filter such as this one you can still kind of get tripped up a little bit by a bright moon in the sky especially if it's quite nearby to the target that you're trying to shoot. It's also worth noting that tonight I'm going to be shooting with 10 minute exposures. I did also try this on the last night out and it still worked fine. I can get away with these long exposures because I'm using such a large mount. It can carry this thing no problem at all. But there's nothing wrong really with using shorter exposures. It's just I like to have less data to deal with at the end of a night. So hopefully this comes across on the screen well for you there. You can see the actual structure of the cave in one of these 10 minute exposures. Um, the guiding performance is 0.32, it's looking like it's doing really rather well. Uh, no complaints whatsoever with the EQ8 Pro's guiding. I will say uh, this is actually quite a challenging target. I've never had too much luck with it before, but that said I've only really tried to shoot it once before and uh, just put it off as a bad job, but this time I'm determined to make it work for me regardless, so we'll see how it turns out. So it's a little bit too dark to show you now, I'd hope to take some video earlier but I got off to quite a late start in terms of recording. The scope has been out since it got dark but I just got off to a late start uh, making the video. But this is my first session where I'm going to be using the ZWO EAF for this telescope. Uh, for a while there I was back to manual focusing using a Barnoff mask and you know, while there's nothing wrong with it, it just admittedly it becomes a pain in the backside when you've gotten used to auto-focusing, like I've got on my Esprit 120 and now like Chloe's got over there on a red cat rig. Um, it's one of those things I think once you've kind of gotten used to it, it really is hard to let it go and go back to manual. So it's reaching midnight now and I thought it was time to give you a little bit of an update on how tonight's going. Um, between the two sessions so far I've got about six and a half hours of data, maybe just a little bit more by this point. I reckon I can stay on this target for about another hour and a half, maybe two hours at a push before I actually lose it into the roof of the house. It's kind of turning over and above me at this point and uh, I will eventually mechanically have to stop. I won't be able to see the target anymore. So I think at that point I'll probably take some flats and I can probably put this target to bed regardless of uh, how the rest of the night goes. It's one of those targets where it'd benefit from having quite a lot more integration time but I've just not really been getting the weather to put in those mega, mega sessions like I'd like to. Um, that said, anyway, uh, I think I've got plenty of targets on the boiler that I need to get, be getting on with, so it's no big deal, and it should still have plenty enough data before tonight's over uh, to make a respectable image. I'm also happy to report that the autofocuser itself has been running completely, completely flawlessly. Um, I haven't even had a chance to calculate the amount of backlash yet in the system, but it doesn't really seem to have made much difference by this point. Uh, it must be very minimal because 
unless it's using some form of overshoot compensation for backlash and calculating it out anyway. Um, whatever it's doing is nailing focus every single time. So I can't complain at all, it's just working flawlessly. So I have to say tonight overall has been an absolute pleasure, um, it's been a real good session to test out guiding and things like that with the EQ8, it's been a sort of a mixed bag at times, there's been little bits of the night where it's been kind of semi windy and it's really held the mount, um, sorry the mount has held the scope really well in those conditions so it's kind of proof that it can do that comfortably which I'm kind of relieved about and certainly like now where it's flat calm the mount's guiding is just phenomenal. I couldn't really be any happier at all. Could not expect more from a mount. Throughout the whole night, I had kind of one technical hiccup and it wasn't really much of a problem at all. Just the ASIA app on the tablet had crashed so I simply closed it down and reopened it again I know it's an extremely technical and involved fix but it did the job and I was straight up and running again in fact it never stopped running the ASIA itself had just continued running along in the background it was merely just the app on the tablet that, that had uh, ran into a little bit of a problem there for a moment anyway that's about it for me on this session now I'm just going to put the flat panel on the end of the scope and take a few flats and that'll be a fully calibrated image once it's stacked ready to be processed into hopefully a nice presentation for you all at the end i really do hope that you've enjoyed the video and if you have then please do leave a like for me as it's going to help my channel grow and reach more and more people which is something i definitely want to do Anyway, I realise I've gone on and on by this point, so I'll try and be swift and wrap things up. I just want to say thank you so much to each and every one of you guys for watching. I really do appreciate it. I want to leave a very special thank you to all my YouTube channel members and the support that you guys are giving. The fact that you're choosing to do that is absolutely awesome of you and I really, really do appreciate it. And I think with that, that's probably about it for tonight now. I'm probably going to hop away and take a few frames on the horse head or something and just play around a little bit before the end of the night so thank you again for watching and until next time glitz guys